So we bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, again, we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Father's Day, and what I want to speak to you about is the faith of our fathers. What was that? Why was that, why, why was that faith seemingly so different from what we see today? What did they have that we don't seem to have? I spoke with a minister some time ago and he was saying, he said, when I compare my church with other churches, we're doing well, we're doing fine, but when I compare myself with the New Testament, we're not doing very well. What, what is this difference? Uh, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Well, I want you to know that this old world is a perfect, perfect place to develop faith. That life was meant to fit us. It was meant to fit us for life. Faith is meant to fit us for life in this world in the workplace, in the home, the school, school and the business. H.G. Uh, Wells said that Buddhism was the best religion on the face of the earth. But he said it would only thrive in warm weather. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a religion that would thrive only in warm weather? If it's bad weather out of the day, I guess I'm not going to be a very good Christian. But if it's a warm day, I believe I can make it. Well, I'm glad Christianity was meant for something more than that. I want us to return to the 25th Psalm. I want us to read, look at uh, something of David's life. This great saint of God. Uh, the 25th Psalm, starting with verse 14. It says this, he says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain. Forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with a cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee, O God. I wait on thee. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I think as somebody put it, this 25th letter shows David, shows a, a good man living in a bad world. And faith was meant to give us that which will help us to live in a bad world. The, Chris, the Bible, the kind of faith that our fathers had was the faith that helped them to live under all circumstances. Now, uh, it's the kind of faith that helped Daniel live in Babylon. It's the kind of faith that Moses had in Pharaoh's court. Now, I want you to know that a normal, a normal Christian life is never smooth. Now, if you're looking for a smooth life, you're not looking for a Christian life. I want this to soak in on it because I think most people are looking for a smooth life. You're not looking for a Christian life. A Christian life is never smooth. Uh, you take, for instance, the life of Jesus was never smooth. From his birth in a stable, his carpentry, his preaching was met with such opposition. And here is Jesus, the Son of God, who never made a mistake in his life, and his life wasn't smooth, why do you think yours ought to be? 
Stick with me now. Why do you think your life ought to be smooth? He's, he's the finest person who ever lived on the face of the earth. And yet his life wasn't smooth, and it's amazing how we're constantly looking for a smooth life, but a normal life is never smooth. Christianity was meant to be a life of victory in the midst of trouble. And the faith of our fathers was that kind of faith that, that, that helped them to live in a, in a bad world. So, to live in this world means trouble. That's for a Christian. David's life was not smooth, but although it had some periods of it. Now, I want you to notice David's life that I just read here, that 19th verse. He had enemies he, that, that hated him. He had an 18th verse. He had affliction, which means trouble. As James says, if any man be afflicted, let him pray. That is, if you've got any trouble, pray about it. And uh, 17th verse, he had distress. 16th verse, desolation, grief, and loneliness, forsaken by friends and loved ones. The 18th verse, he has sins that had to be forgiven. And uh, he said in the 6th verse, Lord, remember in tender mercies. Now this is the kind of life that God kept this man in, with enemies, hatred, affliction, distress, desolation, and uh, being forsaken. This is the kind of life. Faith of our fathers, what kind of faith is that? It's the kind of faith that will remember. Many of our sorrows that come to us in life is because somewhere along the line we can't remember. You take, for instance, Mary Magdalene was weeping at the tomb and the disciples when they went to find Jesus, they were they were men of sorrow why they couldn't remember. And the angel said to them, don't you remember what he said? They couldn't remember, so they were sad. And the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they had, Jesus approached them and said, why are you sad? They couldn't remember. How, many, how much sadness is in the life of a Christian because he can't remember? I could come up to different individuals that are going through problems and they're so sad from all the things that's happening to them. And I said, well, can't you, can't you remember? So uh, memory is a marvelous gift from God. And God gave us a memory. And if we could remember, uh, it would help us in our Christian life. The Bible has something to say on everything in life we face. Are you sick? Well, can you remember what the Lord said? I am the Lord that healeth thee. Or by his stripes we are healed. Can you remember? In the 101st Psalm, the Lord that healeth all thy diseases. Can you remember? Are you alone? Well, remember what he said. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Can you remember? If you feel like you're left alone, well, can you remember what the Bible says? That'll take away the sadness. Have you been cast out? Well, remember what he said. The Lord said, if thy mother and thy father cast thee out, I will take thee in. Are you in financial trouble? Well, can you remember what the Bible says? I am the Lord, said that I, the Lord, I am the Lord that giveth thee power to get wealth. I'm the one who gives you the power to get it. Can you remember that? If you're in financial trouble, then go to him and tell him about it and ask him for his solution in the situation you're in. Can you remember it? If we can remember what the Bible says, it was amazing what it will do for us, but we are all, many times, we go around sad, disappointed, desolate because we can't remember. Can't remember what God said. That's why the Word of God says, I, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we find here uh, that we couldn't remember? What if we couldn't remember this marvelous gift of God? If we couldn't remember, you couldn't hold a job. You couldn't work if you couldn't remember. 
What if we couldn't remember where we lived or couldn't remember who our friends were? We couldn't remember. It's amazing how that we can remember a lot of things, but what God said we can't remember. So the faith of our fathers is a, is a faith that can remember. Faith of our fathers, what kind is it? It's the kind of faith that believes when all hope's gone. In Romans, the fourth chapter, when Abraham, you remember, looked for a son. God promised it at 75. He had to wait till he was about 100. But it says, when all, in the Rome fourth, fourth chapter of the book of Romans, said, when all hope was gone. What's your situation? All hope's gone. Well, can you remember what the Bible says? When all hope's gone? Abraham said, when all hope was gone. He didn't have any left. My situation is desperate. I don't have any hope left. Well, can you remember what the Bible says? It said he hoped on in faith. Yes. Faith is the thing. So he went on. He, he believed even though hope wasn't. He couldn't have any hope whatsoever, but still believed. Look at Zacharias. He couldn't believe. All hope was gone when the angel said, you're going to have a son. All hope was gone. Uh, and because he couldn't hope, God, the angel struck him dead, uh, dumb. It's the kind of faith that believes when God seems to turn a deaf ear. The faith of our fathers is the kind of faith that will believe even though God turns a deaf ear. I tell you, I pray and I just can't get anywhere and God doesn't speak to me. Well, that's what happened to Job. You remember, Job said, I, I go forward and I can't find him. I go backward and I can't find him. I turn to the left hand I can't find him. I turn to the right hand and I can't find him. But he still believed. He couldn't find God, but his, he, he still believed. He said, I know. He said that uh, when he has tried me, I'll come forth as pure gold. And though he slay me, I'll still trust him. This is the faith of our fathers. What kind of faith do we have? What kind of faith do you have? Though he slay me, yet why well, I can't find God anywhere, but though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It's the kind of faith that believes when no answer comes. I'm talking about the faith of our fathers. What kind is it? What kind do you have? It's not a mental belief over some doctrinal position, but this is belief in God. It's the kind of faith that believes when no answer comes. For instance, the three he I love that story of the three Hebrew children. They didn't know if God would they didn't know if God would deliver them or not. They said, We don't know. But one thing, no, we're not going to bow down and worship this uh, idol that you've set up. We're still going to worship God even though we're thrown in a fiery furnace. And we don't know whether he'll deliver us or not. That's the kind of faith of our fathers that we, we need today. Look at the book of Hebrews. This there uh, spoken of the different God's marvelous deliverance of one after another, a whole line of them. But then there was a group that God didn't seem to deliver at all, and said these all died in the faith not having received the promise. They died in the faith believing even though they never received it. That's the faith of our fathers. You want the faith of our fathers, and this is the kind of faith that we want, and this, what kind of faith did the early church have? What is there something about the early church that's so different from us? Like Dr. Tozer said, we say, brother, take it by faith, take it by faith. But he said they had the faith to take it. <laughs> what is the difference in it? The, this kind of faith. They had the faith that caused them when they were, had to be refugees and leave their homes and everything behind. They went joyfully. I, I can't imagine. This is the kind of faith that our fathers had that they could walk off from their homes as refugees. Now, they had to leave their homes, everything behind. They had to leave it. This is the faith of our fathers. Do you want that kind of faith, or you just want a faith to make life smooth? That's not Christian faith. If you want a smooth life, you are not looking for a Christian life. 
So the early church, well, what kind of faith did they have? They had the faith that they could walk off from absolutely everything they owned. Everything. They left it behind. They went joyfully out spreading the word of God wherever they went. It says they took joyfully the spoiling of their goods. Oh, if that word joyfully hadn't been in there, I could take that all right. I think I could grit my teeth and do it. But the faith of our fathers could do it joyfully. I'm talking about what's the difference in our faith today and what they had? Well, this is one big reason. What kind of faith do you have? Could you walk off from absolutely everything you have in your house, turn the key, leave it, walk off, and never see it again? Everything in it. Every prized possession, everything in it. The faith of our fathers. This is the marvelous, this is the kind of faith that God wants to develop in these Christ, in the, in the, in his children, and that's why he's put us in a world that's a perfect place to develop faith. All the problems and situations and situations that you face are perfectly planned to produce in you the kind of faith that could walk off from absolutely everything you have and walk with God. What kind of Christianity do we want? What do you want? A God that can simply give you everything you want, I'll serve him, he'll take care of every need, wonderful. But I'll tell you, if you really walk with God, then you're going to live in a world of trouble and difficulty because God has designed it that way, because he loves you. He wants you to develop a faith in him that no matter what happens, you still believe. That's what, that's what God wants. He wants it because he loves us that much. So what kind of faith do we have? The kind that will carry us through every situation in life. A perfect world to develop the faith of our fathers. It's the, kind of, it's the only kind of faith that will bring you happiness and peace of heart and joy of mind. And God's trying to develop that and that's the only kind of faith that will bring peace with God, that kind that can trust God. It doesn't make any difference. The faith of our fathers is the kind of faith that will work in any country in the world. It's the kind of faith that will work under any political party. It's the kind of faith that will work in any climate. It's the kind of faith that will work under any circumstances anywhere in the world. It's that kind of faith because, as David said, the Lord, don't forsake me in this hour, because he said, Lord, I am trusting thee with all these things, his enemies, his afflictions, the difficulties, the distress, the desolation. He said, Lord, I'm trusting thee. This is the faith of our fathers, and this is what God is trying to get us to receive. This is the only thing that will make you a happy Christian. 